Uh, g'day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is going to be the. This is. I'm Gavin. I'm Kim. We'll get this right soon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is our second video. Um, so, I'm Gavin and I'm Kim. We're not going to sing love. No. No. Okay. You dag. Okay. All righty. So this is going to be about uh, the beginning of Kim's uh, cancer journey. So during this video what I, and subsequent ones, what I'm going to be doing is uh, as we talk about Kim's cancer diagnosis and then subsequently the treatment that she had to go through, I'll let her tell the story in her own words. And if she wants me to jump in and say something, I'll let her do that. But because most of the story is Kim's, uh, I will you know, try and stay out of it as much as I can. However, where it well, where it majorly affected me, I suppose, and together, then we'll talk about that as we go along. How's that sound, love? Yeah, it sounds good. All right, cool. So I don't know whether this will all be one video because it's a long story. Um, well, why don't we? Why don't we just talk about the first? Well, we'll talk about how it two. all started. So let's talk about the diagnosis yeah. as one video. Yeah. And then we'll talk about the treatment as we'll maybe split okay, that into two. All right, so, How's that yeah, sound? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so to start with, I have got no breast cancer history in my family at all. So, um, but I also have to say in the same breath, I've always been fearful of surgery. I've often thought, gosh, I hope I can get through my life without any surgeries. Well, I've already had um, a gallbladder removed. Um, but that was back down in what, 2007? Yeah. Hoping that was going to be the last one. So I fear surgeries. I don't like machines. What yeah, machine? What kind of MRI machines? MRI machines. Right. Scanners. Anything that entombs you. Entombs uh, you? Yep. So, oh, um, goodness. But, we, we've, but we've had to do this, you know. It, so it has made me, uh, I've had to become very brave and get through stuff like this. And Indeed if I do. can do it, then anyone can. Um, so no history of breast cancer in my family at all. Um, obviously, this is going to get quite personal as far as descriptions and stuff like that. So, um, but I've noticed in April, so I probably would have been, what, 54? What year? What year? 2019. Right. So I was probably yep. 54 because um, I'm 56 now. Yep. Yep. And um, I noticed in April that my left breast was, um, I was getting some discharge out of my nipple. Now, I just thought menopause this happens i've done a bit of reading online because i am awful at going online yes can i just jump yeah. in there this is a jump in moment yeah kim and dr google have, uh, have a relationship have a relationship yeah. and it shouldn't be so no. she should have a relationship with her doctors which she yeah. did as we went along i'm but... always getting told off by people for doing yes. that so try and stay away from Dr. Google. Yeah. And um, by Dr. Google, we mean going to do Google search yeah. and going on web pages and finding out things and getting mainly mainly stuff that other people have been through. Horror stories. Yeah, yeah, that's right. A lot of you, horror stories. Because so. it, it won't, it may not and probably won't happen to you. No. Every cancer so. is different. Mm. That's what you've got to remember. So if you've got breast cancer and your friend's got breast cancer, the chances are you've got different types of breast cancer. So yeah. you are you're on your own. You're on your own journey, but obviously, as a collective, everybody's going through the same sort of chemotherapy and stuff like that. But try not to read stuff. Um, yeah, and don't there are some good books others. out there, yeah. and I will put a link up to a book that I bought afterwards, which I wish I'd read before. So anyway. Um, so I went online and I, as Gavin said, found out that probably this was related to going through menopause. So I left it for a month or so um, and it kept stopping and starting. So eventually the little person in my head said to me, right, go well, the to the Or the little doctor. person sitting right next to you now. Or no, or well, yeah, or the big Gavin sitting there. <laughs> no, the, my mind, you know, telling me, go to the doctors. So I went to the doctors and um, they sent me to have a, um, a ultrasound. Ultrasound, yeah. yeah. Ultrasound. Um, and the thing is too, and I have to also wind back a bit, I'm a regular person for getting mammograms done every two, is it every two years? Two years here in Australia? I don't yeah. know, I think so. So I always went for my mammogram. So I think I had a mammogram done the year before. There was nothing, it was all clear. So I've been going for my regular mammograms when they was called, when I was called to go to have them done. Um, so I had an ultrasound done. 
Um, and they did find a little bit of inflammation on the left breast, but mm. they just thought that maybe I had an infection in there and that was the reason why I was getting the discharge from a nipple. I think you went through a course of antibiotics. Just yeah, in case. I had yeah. some antibiotics too. So, um, so it, it didn't clear up, so I thought, no. So I went back to the doctors again. So then they did a, a swab of the discharge to send off to get it tested. Um, and that came back inconclusive, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, but then the doctor said to me, look, you know, I don't really want to ignore this. So I'm going to send you to see a breast surgeon. I thought, right, okay then. So, yeah. so and I'm just looking at my notes here. So I think, so this, so this was in um, April to, you know, June. Um, and then I had the ultrasound done. And then he sent me to see um, the breast surgeon. So my appointment with her was in October. Sorry, in August. August, August 2019. 2019. Yeah. Um, so went to see the breast surgeon. She's amazing. Um, we're not going to put any names in the video of who I saw and everything. Everybody's got their own guys that they usually get referred to. Um, mm. But she was wonderful. Um, she was English, which yes. was lovely. Yes. Um, and anyway, so she checked me out and she said to me, oh, it looks like it is a, um, a ductal carcinoma in situ, which is quite a common thing that women get. So basically... Um, it means the milk ducts that surround the breast can sometimes become infected. Mm. Um, so she could feel... Or, or have abnormal cells. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And she felt, she could feel that, you know, one of them was slightly raised. So she said, right, okay, well, we'll, we'll do surgery because we don't like to leave them in. Because mm. if they do have um, abnormal cells in them, they can turn nasty. Or yeah. sorry, is that the right word? Have I just said well, that right? Yeah, what can happen is the cells can breach the the wall of the milk duct and then infect the breast and then become a tumour. Yeah. Um, so that it was all precautionary at this stage, which was fantastic. Yeah, so, and she said to us that, you know, 99% of the time they come back non-cancerous. Mm. So I thought, oh gosh, here we go, first surgery. Kim's gonna have to go and have surgery. She doesn't wanna have surgery. So right, okay, so we did this. So I think I had my surgery on the 18th of September, didn't I? Yes, the first um, one. Which was pretty quick. So it was basically only a few weeks after I had seen her. Um, so I had the surgery and we went back in for the results a week afterwards, didn't we? Mm. To be told that Kim had the 1%. The, um, the, the duct was filled with, um, with, with cancer, cancer cells. cells. Yeah. Um, and it was invasive. It was quite... Um, it was really filled up with cells, wasn't it? Yeah. So they actually yeah. came back and they said to me, I'm turning my notes over really quickly now. So I had high grade ductal carcinoma in situ, um, which, you know, is not the word you want to hear. So basically it was a case of, right, um, we need to reschedule another sur um, surgery. Yeah, because they wanted to clear the Appearance. tissue around the, where the milk duct had been. Yeah. They wanted to clear it more just to get rid of any cancer cells so they don't spread through the rest of the breast. Exactly. So, um, and also, so we discussed as well, because the um, the duct was obviously very close to my nipple, um, we talked about the possibility of having my nipple removed, which, you know, for a woman, yeah, that is it's a, a big Yeah, it's a deal. big thing. It's, yeah. you know, upsetting. Um, she said there was a high um, probability that um, the nipple would be infected anyway because it was so near to where the duct was removed. Um, so there was a chance that it was going to be all right. There was a mm. chance it wasn't. So I said, no, let's just take the nipple. So during, if she needed to. Yeah, well, yeah. that's right. Well, no, yeah. we said they, she took it anyway. All oh, right. Okay. Um, yeah, because yeah. they weren't going to be able to do any tests on it with, the, is it the biopsies? Yeah. Until after surgery. So we made a decision to remove the nipple. Um, and um, and then they did a bit more of a bigger clearance on the breast because they mm. like to they do margins, don't they? Yeah. Where they test to 10, see... 10 millimetre yeah, margin where, around the tissue. Exactly. Yeah. To test to see if it has, you know, gone outside of the duct. Right, so yeah. also, um, I forgot to mention that on prior to the surgery on the 30th, um, as well as having the clearance done and the nipple removed, um, they wanted to do a sentinel node biopsy, yeah. um, which basically doesn't, they don't remove all of the nodes. They, as the surgeon said, they like to take the gatekeepers, yeah, which so are the main five of them. Yeah, so they wanted to take five lymph nodes from my left armpit to check to see if, because of the fact that I had invasive um, ductal carcinoma, they wanted to make sure that none of them had gone through or the cancer cells hadn't had spread, spread out of the breast. Um, so I had five of the lymph nodes removed too. So um, 
Um, so basically, so I had that surgery done on the um, the thirtieth of yeah. October. Yeah. So only a few weeks after, you know, because I'm healing from one surgery, then I'm back in again. Um, so anyway, so we went back for the results on that one. Yeah. Which was not good again. And we we went, no, we went. I went in there, and this is weird because we went into the appointment, not really, you know, knowing what to expect, basically. Um, and certain the big C word had never been mentioned um, at all. And, uh, and I'll let you continue the story. Well, yeah, you know, so well, they obviously did another clearance. So in that clearance, um, they found a 3.7 millimeter grade three tumor, mm. which is amazing to me because I'm thinking, well, that's obviously been there for a while. It wasn't picked up in mammograms. Now, you know, I'm a large lady, so obviously my boobs are quite big. So, but you know, in fact, the, I think the surgeon actually said Bigger boobs, you can see you can see clearer in them, but obviously mm. that wasn't the case. Um, so that was removed. One of the lymph nodes did have cancer cells in it. I don't really remember much of the conversation after that because yeah, lucky soon, I was there. As soon as yeah. they said that, she said to me, "You're obviously now have to have chemotherapy." Yeah. Well, the first thing I'm thinking is I'm going to lose all my hair. Chemo, you know, it's, it's oh, a scary and your, word. And, and your boobs. Oh, yeah, you that's right. You thought you had to lose both yeah, boobs. Yeah, so, and... you know, so if I was frightened, you know, chemotherapy, cancer, is scary words that we are all, mm. you know, we grow up being scared of the word we cancer. Were, we were chemo. both in shock. Yeah. In that, in that. we didn't know what to say. Believe it, no history, you know, 99% sure that it will be fine. I got mm. the 1% and, you know, and even so she was there with the nurse, the breast cancer yeah. nurse. Yeah. And they were both basically saying to us, we just can't believe that this is happening to you Well, we guys. thought something was up when a, a nurse was there. So. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. and she was a, who was she? Um, she was a breast care nurse. Yeah. What's the organization? Uh, the McGrath Foundation. McGrath. Yeah. So fantastic nurses. Fantastic. Um, but they basically said, you know, you, you're having a bit of bad luck at the moment, Kim. Bad luck. Yeah. So, mm. um, so anyway, so my head is spinning. Thank goodness I had Gavin next to me. I think we got back into the car. Bored her eyes out. And we cried, didn't we? Mm. We were frightened. Indeed. So, so yeah. But um, so she said to me, right, I'm going to put you in touch with uh, an oncologist. Um, yeah. Again, another amazing, amazing lady. Mm. You all right? Um, You're very yeah, bright. Yeah. You're very brave. You're making me cry. <laughs> I know. It's just, you know, just going through all this is just kind of like, because I've just been like on robot mode for the past couple of years, but it just brings it all back again. Um, so anyway, so, you know, I have my surgery. My, um, my surgeon is all about trying to save the breast. Um, a lot of people would just say, right, mastectomy mm. um, but she said no we don't you know she was said she always said to me you lucky Kim you've got a, a good set of big boobs so we can keep taking stuff away yeah. there's, a, there's a lot to work with well, that's said. right so that yeah. was really good um, she said to me we will just keep going in there and doing clearances um, you know while you're still and I said to Gavin look I'm obviously past my bikini days. I would never have bikini days anyway, but I thought as long as I've still got a cleavage, mm. I'll be happy with that. And I know that they can give you bits and pieces to pop in your bra and everything to make the shape equal, but you know, I have lost a bit of my breast, but mm. it's there's still it's still mostly but that's all, there. That's all in the future. That is. Right. So yeah. but yes, anyway, so um so we went to see an oncologist, um, and she basically, yet again, I was probably just in <laughs> I can't believe this is happening to me, uh, mode, but she basically said that they go in aggressively and they do AC yeah. treatment and you get uh, four sessions every three weeks. And AC, I haven't got the notes in front of me, so I can't tell yeah, you Yeah, Gavin will put it up on, on the screen. Yeah. Um, and then that's followed then by uh, 12 weeks of Taxol. Um, I was also having tests. I did not have the hormonal um, breast cancer um, my test came back a bit later because this test takes a bit longer, but I've got HER2, which is... It was HER2 positive. HER2 positive. So yeah. what is it? Um, what was it? Oh, <laughs> Give me the thing. You're allowed to read off the screen, All right, my yeah. Love. So it was, um, I don't know, I should know this. <laughs> I do know it, but just being put matter. on the spot. So 
It is human epiderm epidermal growth factor receptor 2. Um, so the HER2 actually promotes the growth of cancer cells. Yeah, so I want to nip um, that in the bud. So as well as having the two lots of chemo, I was going to have to have targeted therapy called Herceptin for a year. And that mm. was administered every three weeks. Every three weeks yeah. for a year, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, you know, the cancer that I've got is pretty aggressive. Mm. Um, now, you know, this Herceptin was not around a few years ago. Um, so the fact that they've even got this out there yeah. now to give to women... Um, because it certainly reduces um, what the word? What's the word I'm thinking of? It gives uh, you a better chance, a fighting yeah. chance, a better chance, better you know, chance of uh, of, of beating no, it. Yeah, of no yeah. reoccurrence. So you know, so lucky that you know we live in the country where you know the um, a lot of it's paid for. That's right. So I had that for a year. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so look, I'm going to finish now at this spot because yeah, and it's then we'll a... talk about all the great things around treatment and stuff. Yeah, great and things. scans and oh yeah, so you know yeah. we and had a bit of chemotherapy and radiotherapy and all that exactly. stuff. Exactly. So um, and we've got two dogs looking at us over there. Oh, I wanted to come in. Hello, doggos. Hi, guys. <laughs> oh, oh so, they're barking. Anyway, but anyway, so. Anyway, um, we will carry on. In yeah. The, in the so next we'll do session. in the next video. We'll talk about the treatment. Yes. Uh, and and uh, some extra diagnosis for uh, stuff that was a little bit scary as well. Yeah. Anyway, we'll talk about that in the next video. All right. Okay. For now, Bye. I'm Gavin. I'm Kim. And we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.